Hello everyone, Richard here. In this video we're going to be looking at my full-size Nefertiti print. I've been getting quite a lot of uh, questions, feedback and generally comments about this print over the last few days. So I thought I would uh, show you the print, show, the, show you the model and actually talk a little bit about how I produced it, how I printed it on a desktop 3D printer, I used the big box 3D printer and then how I use some finishing techniques that you might be able to use in some of your prints uh, to give you some nice results. So first of all here is the print and this is our Nefertiti. So this model itself has got quite a story attached to it and you can find out more about that on my blog. I won't go into that too much here. So first of all when I got hold of this model um, I was absolutely amazed by how high quality it was. This is a really is it's a professional 3D scan or a reconstruction of this beautiful historical artifacts um, and she is beautiful but also the model is incredibly detailed as well so you can see every tiny little detail on the headdress you can see all of the paint over the years and where it's chipped and all these tiny little imperfections and defects which are just really amazing so I thought about printing it small like everyone was going to print just a small object um, on, their, on their 3D printer and I thought no this really needs to be done at full size so the first thing I looked at was how to cut this model up so I could actually, it's a bit heavy, it's actually almost, it's about nine kilograms, so I'll have to put it down in a minute, but um, the first thing I did was look at how I could cut this model up so it'd be easy to print in sections, but also be hidden when I joined it back together. So what I did was actually cut a band across, uh, across the top here and actually cut this top section off of her headdress and then split it down the middle as well. She has this damaged piece at the front and a ridge that runs all the way up the front and the back and down the side. So it was quite easy to be able to separate the headdress into two smaller sections that would print on the 3D printer. Her face, because she has facial features obviously with the nose, the eyes and the ears which are fairly hard to print on a desktop 3D printer because you either need to use support material or you need to angle it. So because I had cut the top headdress off I chopped across her neck and actually that gave the angle to print which was much much easier to actually print this 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 face section. So we've got two sections up here we've got the face section and then we've got the lower section and the lower section is just from her neck downwards. So those were the four sections I used and I printed that on the big box uh, 3D printer and the top two sections were completely hollow so this left and this right side are just spiral vials printed they're completely utterly hollow they've only got an outer wall and this is where you get all of this wonderful fantastic detail the face has got around eight percent infill i think it might have been six or eight percent it's very very low and it's just a rectilinear infill so very minimal amount and just a single wall outline the base again is exactly the same, so the base again is about another six or eight percent infill. Okay, so when I was when I was printing the model, uh, I started with the top headdress, and I was using Colorfab XT material, clear Colorfab XT. Printed the two top sections, then I printed the face, and I actually ran out of material while I was printing the bottom section, so I ended up with this this part, which was complete uh, uh, unfinished and not complete. So. I ended up changing over for the bottom section to the new NGEN material that Colorfab have released very recently, which is a very nice material. It's again an, another copolyester, and it was nice to actually compare those two. I've been printing a few things with this, but it was nice to compare the strength and actually how much how many of the features came out. And it was quite interesting. This part is reasonably detailed, it has a few features, but it has a lot of tiny um, spots and imperfections over the years where it's built up some damage and they came out really really well on the NGEN print. Um, the two top sections and the face also came out really well but uh, I was very very impressed with the bottom section how well NGEN pulled out all the details. Okay so after that uh, it was a case of taking those prints and actually fills the top sections and the face and the bottom section all with builders plaster it was just a grey plaster I got from the local DIY store 
very cheap big bag of plaster and actually just filled those completely with wet plaster and let them to let them dry they only took a couple of days to dry out and then that made very very solid sections which you can you can hear they're really they're really solid sections that I could uh, glue together now I've used different types of glues for materials um, over the years but I found the best solution especially for large pieces when you want to hold them together is to actually use super glue and activator so you can run the super glue down the uh, seams and then you spray on the activator and it instantly cures without leaving any white marks that cyanoacrylate super glue normally leaves so it's a really nice way of joining these pieces together and allows you to uh, to create a nice solid model out of, out of smaller sections so that was what I was left with when I put all these pieces together they were very solid because they had all the plaster in and then they were joined together with cyanoacrylate and the activator which made it all very very solid after that it only actually took minutes to sand down and get rid of some of the imperfections and I purposely wanted to not touch this top section up here I didn't want to take any of the detail out of all of the features the beautiful features that this model has got so actually the only section I've really done anything with is the face and a little bit on the neck just to make it nice and smooth and all I've done there is use a combination of 600 grit sandpaper so this sort of wet and dry sandpaper I actually used it dry so I only really just rubbed off a few of the features and they were just imperfections in the actual print filament and a couple of small lines that, that, that were just little flecks that the nozzle must have caught on so there's a couple of little ones but nothing very serious after that you can actually then use um, a spray and over the years I've used different uh, paints and sprays but I've found that actually this stuff zinc primer intended for cars uh, protects from rust it's got a high level of zinc content and it actually looks really nice on 3d printed models and it goes on really well to PLA, PET or even ABS so you can just spray this on as you would normally and let that dry, it dries pretty quick and it gives another really nice surface to just sand down ever so lightly again I only, only actually touched the painted surfaces with the sandpaper after, after the first coat sanded them down really lightly and then after that I used a combination of stainless steel scourer which polishes up and just smooths off and then finally a one of these uh, scrubbing pads which is like a dishwasher scrub, dishwash scrubbing pad and some metal polish so if you use a tiny bit of metal polish you can use as much as you like but just small sections so you don't get it too into all the features because you have to dig all that out or polish it out then you can go through and actually buff up this zinc primer paint to actually quite a shiny finish you can get a really nice shine from this zinc paint um, the zinc itself has actually got about a 68% zinc content. You've got to be a little bit careful when you buy it because you can buy different levels and the higher zinc content, the shinier it will be and the better it will be for um, sort of an overall finish. This is really cheap. So this is just uh, three pounds, about four and a half dollars to buy these in, in, in packs. And I buy about six at a time. And you don't use very much. I only use about half a, half a tin on this model. Uh, the whole model there's only actually two coats so it's only got two coats on it after that I've really just let it sit and let it completely dry out and I've put a, a final coat of lacquer on it that's why it looks a little bit shiny and actually I did debate long and hard about whether to do that or whether to leave Nefertiti as a little bit matte and shiny face but in the end I wanted a protected coating so I've put a, uh, a polyurethane lacquer over her so she can sit so if I show you the base you can see the plaster underneath and that just needs a, a, a sort of foam pad to sit on and she actually sits perfectly she's really perfectly balanced so we have her in the kitchen now it's quite a talking point for people coming around and seeing Nefertiti staring back at them 3,300 year old sculpture that's been liberated into the world and that you can now have at home and print full size so I'm going to share my model files, the sections I've used and the way I've cut it up on Umagine so you can actually then print this model yourself if you wish in the full size without any support materials and with low infill so it doesn't even use very much material. I used about 
680 grams. It wasn't quite a full roll, uh, and that's why I ran out of uh, Color Fab XT because I used my uh, I used my very last roll of clear Color Fab XT, and then had to switch over to a bit of Engen at the end. So it doesn't use a great deal of material, and really easy to actually produce. So okay, the only thing I would really say is if you do uh, go for these uh, polishing techniques and you use different um, polishes and different things, just be careful. Use obviously face masks, uh, especially with the cyanoacrylate, that sort of thing. Do it outside and clear, clear air. And um, the other top tip is a microfiber cloth is great for buffing up any types of uh, 3D printed surface finishes. If you've ever tried to polish up brass fill or copper filaments, they're really difficult to get a nice shine out of. But when if you use a microfiber cloth with a little bit of polish, rub like mad, you can actually get really nice finishes. This took minutes to actually to get to this point. I didn't spend a great deal of time on it at all. It's just a couple of spray coats, paint, a little bit of sanding, a bit of buffing, and that's it. The cyanoacrylate fills in all of those little gaps, the seams, really nicely if you use the activator because it fuses it instantly and you end up with a great result. So I'm really pleased with it and thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.